from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell in Melbourne and this week I have been exploring a little bit about where the ashes actually originate from. And I mean the actual ashes, the tiny little urn. And I've been out in country Victoria up to the old country mansion where the England captain in 1882, Ivo Bly, was presented with that little terracotta urn for the very first time. And it is a magnificent mansion with lots of original features still. And you can tell that it comes from a very colonial era, the Clark family who owned it, one of the wealthiest, most powerful families in Victoria at that time. So there you go. You didn't know you were going to start with a history lesson, Jim and Charu, first up. <laughs> And it's typical of the uh, old country. They stole that thing because they've never given it back. Never given it back. It's sitting in a museum at Lord's. Even when Australia wins it, we can't get our hands on the real deal. It's Jim Too right. and Sydney <laughs> raving on about something we're all excited about uh, because next week we might actually be talking about a game of cricket instead of all the side shows that we've been putting up with. But it's a bit of a damp squib up there in Brisbane. Hasn't stopped raining. And uh, the boys are out there in their budgie smugglers and the surf boat more than on the field practising for the series. So hopefully we get some drier weather. Hi, everybody. This is Charu Sharma for All India Radio. And listen, Jim, don't start me off. If you think the urn that belongs to Australia is in England, I can't even begin to talk about everything that belongs to India that's in England. But that's for another day, the history lesson. OK, um, I've just come back from the forever beautiful district of Coorg, where our coffee uh, is being picked and the picking season started. I drove back just in time for Stumped. That's how it is. Never want to miss a show. And of course, um, just a short while ago in India, Test Cricket got a huge fillip because of that magnificent draw against the Kiwis, which, of course, brings a lot of attention to the next test between New Zealand and India at uh, Mumbai. So we wait for that one. Isn't it fantastic when a drawn test match brings so much excitement and gets so much attention. That is what Test Cricket is all about, isn't it? We are joined by our special guest this week. It is a former Pakistan captain who is currently serving as chair of the Pakistan Cricket Board. Now, Ramiz Raja won the World Cup in 1992 with Pakistan, played throughout the 80s and 90s. Since retiring from the game, he became a commentator travelling the world and he's commentated with us indeed. And Jim, and you and I were with him not too long ago when Pakistan toured Australia. So we extend a very warm welcome to Stumped to Ramiz Raja. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ali. And uh, hello, Charu and James. Uh, so nice to be in company of very, very important people and a lady. <laughs> I don't know about that. I was going to say, Ramiz, it was only a couple of years ago that uh, Jim and I were commentating with you in Australia on the Pakistan series. What made you, was it such a bad experience that you thought, I can't commentate with these people anymore. I have to go and be chair of the Pakistan Cricket Board. <laughs> You see, so, so what happened was that, you know, um, the PM, obviously, you know, our childhood hero, um, Mr. Imran Khan, you know, this was about six months back. And, he, and so he invited us over for a dinner. And so we got talking about the game, you know, after dinner. And he said, look, um, you know, I need, I need a new name for the chair of PCB. And I was giving him 10 names, you know, after every 10 minutes. And then this process continued for about good three months. So I was trying to avoid the accident. Uh, and I was, I was telling him, oh, that gentleman fits the bill. And Jack, he says, no, his body language. You know, he was assessing every individual as if he was captain of a cricket team. So, you know, he's temperamentally not strong. You know, his body language is not great. He will sit on the fence. He won't take decisions and all that. And so suddenly he popped up the question and I, I just couldn't refuse. And so later on, when I went for an official meeting, I said, you know, thank you for giving me the job, but you realize that there is no money uh, as being the chairman of the cricket board. He says, what? <laughs> There's no money? He says, uh, so how, how will you manage that? I said, I don't know. You asked me to do it, so I'm doing it for free. Um, and so interestingly, you know, just now, last week during the ICC meetings, all the chairman of the board took me out and paid for my bill because they said you can't afford anything, mate. So, you know, the, the bill is on us. <laughs> I think there's a few other countries where that's not paid either. So perhaps you'll need to like do a round and buy each other yeah. dinner. <laughs> like it's been an eventful first few months in the job for you, hasn't it? And if I just take you back to only a few months ago, 
when Pakistan, sorry, when New Zealand and then England pulled out of their tours of Pakistan. Have you learned any more about the circumstances since then? And how do you feel about that now? I took office on the 13th. New Zealand was supposed to play the first game on the 14th. And so I go to Islamabad, get ready to go in the morning and, you know, uh, and, and, and see how things pan out. And so we get a call saying that New Zealand uh, are going back home. I said, what? He says, yeah, there's been a threat. And so, uh, uh, and, and we try to reason with them and obviously, you know, it didn't work uh, and they pulled out and then England spooked. So I was told by the chairman, the ex-chairman that, you know, we're very sorry, but you know, it's not possible for the players to come because after seeing New Zealand pull out, uh, the players don't feel comfortable. So, I mean, I was hit by a massive avalanche. I, I actually felt being a cricketer that, you know, uh, this is just, I mean, there wasn't any cricketing reasons and there wasn't any security reason. Uh, and that what we had uh, delivered uh, as far as England was concerned in COVID times, we'd send our team. So I used that phrase that, you know, we were used and binned. Um, and, and that, you know, as, as part of the ICC cricket fraternity, the cricket fraternity should have come to our help. Um, and, and so I, I, I wrote a, a very emotional letter to the chairman of ICC as well. Uh, and I said, well, uh, you know, you've got to be emotionally invested uh, in a country's progress and in country's cricket, and you cannot divorce yourself from such issues. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, so it was quite messy. Uh, but in the end, you know, I, I thought both New Zealand and England were very gracious the way they came back, uh, it must not have been easy for ECB to come and pay a visit. That was Tom Harrison, wasn't it, the CEO? Yes. Um, and so um, he came um, and uh, he said, he, he told me about the circumstances uh, and he, he apologized and which was, and I, I mentioned it, you know, openly um, that it, it was extremely gracious uh, of England really to do that. And now we have a rescheduled New Zealand tour as well. So they're playing extra two matches. We've got England back playing in Pakistan. Uh, this is going to be our heavyweight summer, uh, by the way, or winter, because uh, we now uh, look after West Indies uh, in 10 days time. And then we have the PSL. Then we have Australia playing three test matches in few one days. And then in the winter time, we have Aust um, England and then New Zealand and the World Cup. So. A lot to look forward to. I know at the time you made a, a fairly sort of pointed comment about sort of Western bloc mentality. Do you still worry about that going forwards, and particularly with Australia due to tour Pakistan? Do you believe that will go ahead? About the bloc, I, I just feel that you know um, it, it, our situation is scrutinised more uh, when it comes to touring, um, especially Pakistan. I'm not too sure about India um, or Sri Lanka, but you know, ours has been, uh, we've been scrutinized a lot more than uh, other cricketing nations. And we've done our best really to convince the world that look, yeah, I mean, it was a horrific incident that took place about 10, 15 years back or whenever it was. And so we have learned from, from that experience and, and Pakistan has got a rich, yeah, has a rich history, legacy. I mean, uh, you saw what happened during this T20 World Cup where um, the entire nation was behind Pakistan as a, as a, as a, as a sport. Cricket, uh, as you know, in, in, in our part of the world uh, uh, has got the blessings of zillions of fans. Uh, and, um, and so I just feel that, you know, you've got to invest just a little bit more in our pains in what we have done really to make sure that the product is in safe hands and that, uh, you know, it's a wonderful country to travel. Speaking of the, the T20 World Cup, on a happy note, that was an incredible run that the team had. What do you think they're going to need to just go that one step further to, to get over the line and win another trophy? Yeah, I mean, I had a fabulous debrief by Matthew Hedden just the other day. And, uh, you know, he, he praised Pakistan for, you know, what they produced. Um, uh, and he was impressed by the spirituality as well. But one thing uh, that he mentions is, is that, you know, uh, this team crumbles just a little bit under pressure in the fielding department. Um, and I think uh, that is what we need to do. Uh, I think um, 
you know, some nations have worked extremely hard on getting their, their teams fit in Pakistan is about six months away from getting that target. But I think uh, this was a, a great Philip. This really was what we needed. Because, um, uh, you know, I told Babar Azam also that, you know, you need to engage fans and you've got to create uh, expectations. You know, it's in our D DNA to be, uh, to be aggressive, uh, to be entertaining uh, uh, and uh, to be different. Uh, so let's not forget um, that that's in our DNA. Uh, and, I, and I'm a firm believer that, you know, I'm, you see right now we don't have a bowling coach, we don't have a batting coach and I'm quite fine with that. Um, I'd rather put all my energy and effort uh, at the second or the third tier. I am from that old school of thought where I feel that, you know, the captain should be the leader and he should be given, you know, some help, uh, but the team shouldn't be spoiled and, uh, you know, that the dressing room shouldn't look like uh, a bazaar, you know, where there are 30 coaches just waiting for you to pounce on you uh, if you fail. So uh, I'm quite happy to just let them be. Just moving on to the potential for women's Pakistan Super League in the near future. And this would yes. be wonderful as you'd be the first country in Asia to have a women's T20 league. Are there any plans to bring this into fruition in, in the near future? 100%, yes. Uh, I've asked my team to prepare um, a paper. Um, you see, what is happening is that we don't have a pathway uh, for women's cricket. So it's like, you know, you have these colleges and schools where they play cricket, uh, but it's just not been happening regularly. So we, we try to create pathway of, of these young women coming through and then also to, to give them importance. Right now, if you come to the uh, PCB headquarters outdoors, there are massive posters of, of the women team. Uh, and, 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 and so it, it's such an important aspect of our game. And, and I came to know more about the value of the, of the, uh, of the women when Pakistan uh, played superbly during this T20 World Cup because it was 50-50. There were little girls chanting for Pakistan team to do well. And, and, and so I, I just want to milk that, uh, that feel-good factor that this team has created and, and create properties for Pakistan also. Right now, we are far too dependent on, on ICC funding, and I want to move away from that model. Uh, and I can only do that if I create new properties. So what is happening is that we'll be the first team, I'm sure, to have an age cricket PSL. So it's going to be a PSL Junior, which will be launched in, uh, in October. Um, you know, the under 19s of, of Australia mm. and England, uh, you know, will be playing in Pakistan. And uh, I'd be quite happy giving a dugout to somebody like Ricky Ponting or a Viv Richard. So let them, uh, let them be in company of the greats. Uh, and let them earn money and let them feel confident because what is happening right now in Pakistan age cricket is that there is talent, but there is this, this, this lack of confidence. Yes, well, get Shaheen to go up and talk to them all. I mean, he's going <laughs> sensationally. And yeah. boy, has he got some attitude. Wow, wow, absolutely. So, you know, uh, this, is, this is quite crazy, actually. So, Babar Azam was here with the, uh, with the chief selector just going, uh, you know, before going to the World Cup. And I said, what are your plans against India? Uh, he says, um, I've got plans. You know, we, we employ quick ways, you know, they do the matchups and all that kind of stuff. I said, I understand, but, uh, you know, India may use quick ways also. So what happens, you know, they'll have, a, a, you know, a, a ploy set up against you. So, you know, that becomes nothing for us, you know. So he says, uh, so I said, right, I, I can tell you right now uh, how to get rid of uh, Roy Sharma. He says, tell me, I said, you get China Freedy bowling at 100 miles an hour, get a man at short leg and a 45, bowl that in swinging Yorker full pitch, 100 miles an hour, don't give him a single. Don't give him a single, keep him on strike until you get him out because that ball is going to swing for an over or two not more than that in UAE. And the Crickways had it like that also. So in, <laughs> you know, so he says, uh, so, so um, KL Rahul in swing, good length delivery, Rohit Sharma full pitched in swing, uh, that can do the job. 
uh, and then KL Rahul may struggle against left arm angle also. So, I mean, it's quite superb how these matchups are done. So, you know, even though I come from old school of thought, but, you know, these some of these technology stuff is quite amazing, actually. So, <laughs> you know, it's much easier for the captain also to, to have a plan A and plan B and plan C. So they know exactly at what time should an Harris Rauf spell begin. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and how to bowl to a certain individual. It's, it's quite amazing stuff. But at the end of the day, it's the gut feeling also. And I, I'm a big believer of gut feeling. I mean, this cricket is why, because we all have gut feeling. Thank God for that. Great to see you here. See you again on Stump. You, uh, you want to be a part of the ICC working group appointed by the game's governing uh, body uh, to review the status of cricket in Afghanistan. You've been mentioning how emotional this part of the world is. So, oh. in light of the recent political situation in that country, what can you tell us about the developments uh, about your working group in the ICC? So, we had a meeting, um, but it was decided uh, in unison that Afghanistan cricket talent shouldn't be hurt at all because they've got some fabulous players. So, all their funding will continue, um, albeit, you know, there'll be more eyes watching them, how they spend that money. Like... Um, Everybody else, I think we, we're giving them time. Uh, and I think uh, let's not jump the gun. Uh, you know, they're in a difficult situation. So there's this, this cultural war and then there's the cricketing thing. Uh, and then, you know, who is in charge? You know, how long will the world come to realize that, you know, things are working uh, in, the, in, in the right direction? Uh, and I think uh, wait and watch is the policy of the world and wait and watch is the policy right now, the ICC as well. It's a busy time for you, Ramiz, that is for sure. Best of luck yeah. with the role going forwards. I'm sure we'll see you on some different shores again very soon. And um, yeah, let's hope that teams do get back out touring Pakistan. But thank you so and much for exactly. really appreciate it's your time on Stumped. Thank, thank you so great. much. Thank you all. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Charu, James, Alison. Thanks. Yeah. Well, that's all we've got time for here on Stumped on All India Radio. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter. We're at BBCWS Sports. Use the hashtag BBC Stumped. And you can find us on YouTube as well. Go to BBC World Service YouTube. And uh, my thanks to Cherry Sharma, Jim Maxwell, and of course to you all for listening. Make sure you join us again next week. Until then, bye-bye. From the BBC World Service, in association with ABC and All India Radio, this is Stumped.